Hi, Marco Di Stefano here. I'm so happy to finally announce the release of Flow 2. This version is a major improvement compared to the previous one. The basic Cubase and Vienna template have been improved to be more modular and easy to extend. But mainly the big announcement is about the introduction of Flow Plus, a revolutionary application for remote control that is going to disrupt the way you work. I will deep dive into the feature of this application in another video. The scope of this video is to guide you through the installation of Flow2. In the shop page, you will find the different products. The bundle is the one that contains the license for the application, plus all the necessary data for the template. The Flow2 professional bundle is the one that includes all the libraries which are part today of Flow. After purchasing the product, you will be downloading those two folders. One that contains all the templates and the data, and the second one that contains the source code to run the application Flow Plus. For this video, we are going to follow the document that is available on the docs section of the website. Here you can see the Flow 2 installation guide. Before starting, or even before purchasing, make, su make sure that you have uh, the, the right software. So meaning OpenStage Control, download the latest version. You need to have Cubase Pro, at least version 10 or 11. You need to use VN Ensemble Pro version 7. It's not working with version 6. And then you need to have Contact 6. And make sure that you update Contact 6 to the latest version available. The first step in the setup of Flow 2 is to create virtual MIDI ports. This is the list of all the MIDI ports that needs to be created. For Windows users, it's quite simple. You can use the application Loop MIDI. As you can see from here, you can write the name of a port, you can click plus and the port is created. So just make sure that you copy exactly those names and that you create one MIDI port for each of those. For Mac users instead, you can create the default MIDI devices using the IAC. Just make sure that you do, do not put any name on the device name, that you leave it blank. Next thing to do is to set up the Vienna Ensemble Pro server. To do so, launch Vienna Ensemble Pro, not the file, but just the server for the first time. When you launch it, go to Preferences, Instances, and make sure that you have at least three here or more, at that and that then that you have at least 36 and 18 on those things, as you can see in the user manual. Also, I suggest you to disable the parameter tweaking with, mo with mouse wheel to avoid that actually you will change parameters without noticing when you will uh, move your the wheel of your mouse. So once this is finished, you close it, and you go in the folder where is located the template. You go in the folder one, Vienna Ensemble Pro, and you launch this file. This will open the Vienna template for Flow. As you can see, all the instruments comes disabled. Then you will be able to enable those the tracks that you need uh, by using the normal Flow with Cubase. So here it is, this is the full project. As you can see, every instance has the name of the libraries that it contains, so that it's much easier, for example, to locate where a library is, or for example, to take this uh, template and split it through different machines, where each machine has a certain library. After that, let's go back to the manual. We need to set up Cubase Pro. So to launch, to set up Cubase Pro, the first things to do is to copy the logical presets. So how to do that? Again, we go in the template folder of the product that you downloaded. You go in Cubase Pro here, and you find a folder called presets. So you copy this one. And then depending if you are Windows user or Mac users, you should go in the folder of Cubase where these presets are stored. 
So you find this information in the user manual. For me, this is the path. And then you pass inside this folder, project logical editor, the flow folder with all its contents. As you can see, this contains a lot of presets which have been already pre-built and generated for working with flow. Next step, setting up the generic remotes. To set up the generic remotes, you need to open Cubase. And when you do that, create an empty project that you will not save then. That's just to access the menu options. Okay, create an empty project just to be able to access the options in the menu here. Go to Studio, Studio Setup, and create four different generic remotes by going to Add Device, Generic Remote. So do this for time. In my case, I have already done it. It's one, two, three, and four. For each of those, you have to import the generic remote that is in the flow package, and you have to set the right MIDI input and MIDI output. So I will show you one. I select this one, I do import, I go to the folder of the template, Cubase, generic remotes, and I will add this one here. And, and that's it. To know exactly which one needs to be set and what are the MIDI ports to use, you have the documentation here. It tells you, for example, okay, import these generic remotes and set this MIDI input and output. This generic remote with this input and output. So just follow all this and do not forget to also import the one of the quick controls, which is this one, which is not one that you create, but it's there by default with Cubase. So here you just do import, you do the flip flow quick controls, you set up the port, apply, okay. And also this is done. Next step is about checking that Cubase is configured to receive the the program change as a trigger to change articulation. How to do that? You need to create a MIDI track. You have to go to expression map. You go to expression map setup and you'll check at this one here, the remote settings. You have different ways. This one says that it's a program change that will trigger the expression map to change the articulation. Next, is about com some configuration that you have to do in Cubase. That's one, it's really key. I'm going to show you where it is. So you just go to project, sorry, edit, preferences, and then you go inside project and mix console. And make sure that enable record on selected MIDI track is enabled. Otherwise, there will be no communication between Cubase and Flow Plus. Another thing that you can do, but that's more cosmetics, is to go in the tracks here. So, and put this number to the maximum one. This means that the length of the text that is displayed in the track is made of at least for, uh, maximum 14 characters. Okay, once this is done, you can now close this file. Don't save, of course. And you can go back in the folder of the Cubase project and you can open the Flow C Professional or whatever Cubase project that you have. New folder. Voila. So you can see now everything is connected. If we check in Vienna, you can see that all the instances have been connected to Cubase. In case you have, so Cubase project is set up so that it connects automatically to local host instances. So if you want to move those to different servers, I suggest you that first you put it on local host, you open also your file in all the servers, and then you manually redirect those instances to uh, like that. You, directly man, uh, you manually redirect them to your server. Okay, 
next things to do is about open stage control. So open stage control is a wonderful application which has been built based uh, on JavaScript uh, technologies, so Electron in particular. It's hosted here, so you can go there and you can download the latest version. When you download that, download the zip file, so it comes like a zip, and then the only things you need to do is to unzip that folder and put it somewhere in your PC. In that case, I'm showing you, this is what it looks like when you extract it. Inside the folder, there is a X file, this one here, which I just put it here on my desktop. And that, that's all. So now you can run this one. Be careful because the first time that you launch it, you might receive a message from the antivirus that is blocking this application. So just make sure that you give all the rights uh, to access the network, otherwise you won't be able to use it properly, and then eventually stop it and start it again. The configuration to do here is really minimal. You need to put whatever a number you want here on the port. Uh, on the MIDI, you just go in the user manual and you do copy and paste of the value which is there. This one. And then for this one, these two, so in the load, you open the folder and you locate the file, so the package that you downloaded called flow plus, in that case is the version 1.0.1. So here is the source code. So you click inside the main folder and you select this file here that is called OSC data. You double click, you do the same with the custom module and you got here custom module. You do the same with the theme here. So you open and this time you go inside the folder called CSS and you select flow. And here you can put whatever name you want. So now you can launch it and you will see that th the first time that it will run, it will be like that. So there is no content, which is pretty normal because you need to first activate your license. Go back in the email that you received with your order. So put here your email, the one that you used to make the order. Copy here the license key that you have received with the order and press activate. In my case, since this license uh, was already uh, used, I'm going to first do a reset. So as you can see here, it says license reset done and then unactivate. Checking, successfully activated in this machine. So now you will be able to use uh, Flow Plus in this machine. Do not worry if you here see any messages that say that the license has been, is, is already being used. So just put reset and activate again. Okay, now you need to close and you need to re stop it and launch it again. But you will see that if I try to activate any window, you will not get any content and you will even get a message that say impossible to find data. How to fix that? So let's close that. This is because the application in itself, it's modular, it does not have data. It, this is just the source code. So what you will need to do is that you will need to copy the data that you purchase with your template inside the application. This is also described here. How to do that? So go in the template product that you purchased. You will see that you have Vienna, you have Cubase, but you also have Flow Plus data. Here you go, you go inside the data folder and you copy the full content. And now that you copy this full content from the template product, you go in the source you go, you see that there is a folder called data and you passed it here. So what we just did is to copy all the articulations, so all the tracks, all the folders and everything inside the app. So now the app knows what it has to show. Now coming back to open stage control here, we launch it again and we see that this time when we click on this button, content will appear. Okay, it's not the purpose to show the features of Flow Plus in this video, I will do it in, other, in another one. But just to make sure 
that everything is working, we need to do two things. So you will see now that whenever I click on those folding actions, this will reflect in Cubase. So for example, the Woodwinds folder here, I close it, it gets closed here. This means that there is communication between the two and that's already good. The second thing to check is just click on one track here, whatever, and you should see the name of the track appearing here with all its articulations and the quick controls. And voila, it works, so everything works. You can see the articulation are changing. So if you arrived at this stage, it's everything is working. If it's not working, the most one of the most common error that I've seen so far, it's always related to the generic remote. Just double check that you imported the right generic remotes with the right MIDI ports, which is something very easy to do because you just need to look at what is described here. All right, so that's the generic remote to import and thus these are the ports to be set. Another thing that might happen and that might cause some issue is that the first time that you launch Cubase, you will have a message that says that there are certain ports which are not being mapped. So you do not need to skip that message, like this one here. Uh, you don't need to skip that message, but instead, you see here it says flow main one unmapped. You need to click on unmapped and you need to find flow main one and put it manually and then click OK and then you can save the project. I don't know why that happens, but sometimes uh, I've seen that this uh, happened for certain customers. That's it, that's all. If you arrive at this stage, so everything is set up. So now you are able, you are able to start to compose. And I'm going to explain in another video in more details the features that you have with the pos all the possibilities that you have with the application Flow Plus. Thanks for watching, bye.